thank you everybody for coming uh, to this. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I look, before we get started, I want to ask, I know we do this for new gardeners, new to the, the, the South gardeners. Um, doesn't matter how long you've lived here. If you haven't really been a, a gardener, you want to learn more, we're, we're doing these programs. Um, how many people have never been to the J.C. Ralston Arboretum before today? Oh, man. I hate that there's so many people who haven't been here, but I love that y'all are here. Um, yeah. Um, you know, we do, we do a ton of programs here. I'm going to talk about a few of them before we get started with our speakers. Um, by the way, I'm Mark Wethington. I'm director here. Uh, we do all these programs, and every once in a while, I'll get a, an idea like say to do a free program for new gardeners <clears throat> and kind of throw that out and then my staff who is amazing runs with it and puts together uh, fantastic programs like this um, they, they really are are amazing we keep saying we're going to cut back on what we do and keep doing more and more and more so um, so y'all are really lucky you've got some some great things going on so before we get started since so many of you have not been to the arboretum before i wanted to say uh, talk a little bit about what we do here um, just so you're, you're aware of what we're doing, you know, we're, we're often, people say we're the best kept secret in, uh, in Raleigh, and we don't, we don't want to be the best kept secret. <laughs> so just going to go through real quick a few things about the Arboretum. Uh, first thing is, who is J.C. Ralston, uh, which is a, you know, people hear the name, they have no idea what that is, who that is. Um, J.C. Ralston uh, was a professor here at NC State University. He came in 1975, and, and we date the Arboretum to 1976. You know, let him have a, a couple of months settling in before he, he started uh, uh, going here. And uh, part of what he was tasked to do when he came to NC State was to help grow the nursery industry. He taught nursery management, um, worked with nurserymen, and, and J.C. had been uh, all over the country. Um, he had... Uh, he had Worked in, in Florida and, and uh, worked in uh, 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 Texas, uh, places like that. And um, he had seen what he, he called the 40-90 rule. Um, about 40 plants made up 90% of the, of the available plants at nurseries. And his thinking was, well, nobody can make any money. New people can't come into the industry. We're not going to get any growth if everybody is growing the same 40 plants. And so he set out, in his words, to diversify the, the American landscape. And just brought things into here, planted them out, and uh, saw how they did. The ones that were good, he distributed widely to nurserymen. Uh, the ones that did poorly, he sent off to people in other parts of the country to see if they'd do well in those parts of the country. And in uh, 2004, he passed away in a car accident, unfortunately, in 1996. In 2004, Horticulture Magazine, to celebrate uh, an anniversary, commissioned this painting, the Heavenly Garden Party. It was the 25 most influential gardeners who had passed away at, at that point in 2004. And if you're not a hardcore gardener, you might not recognize a lot of them. If you like roses, you might recognize Graham Stewart Thomas up there. Um, you know, there's Ernest Wilson and Gertrude Jekyll. And, our own Elizabeth Lawrence here from North Carolina out in Charlotte. You can visit her house uh, uh, there. You know, Thomas Jefferson, you know, no greater service you can do your country than introduce a new plant. Well, right here is JC. They, they, uh, he was considered one of the 25 most important gardeners. And I love this picture because they, if you look carefully, he's got a pair of pruners in his hand. And he was uh, well-known, notorious, infamous, uh, for liberating cuttings from plants <laughs> wherever he went. But he came by that honestly because everything he grew here, he shared with everybody else. The idea of keeping plants for yourself um, wasn't, uh, wasn't in his vocabulary. Now, he didn't always ask permission, you know, but, uh, but he did always share what he had. So, you know, so the 40-90 uh, rule. So we still do that. We still plan out all kinds of things everywhere. That's, that's what we do. Uh, we've got about um, 7,000 different plants in the landscape here uh, that we're evaluating, and then we cut down uh, and make room for new things. But we do try and do it in landscape settings. I hope those of you who haven't been here will take a chance after, I take the opportunity after this to walk around the, the Arboretum and see it. Even in winter, it is, it is quite beautiful, but it, it changes uh, seasonally, of course. 
Um, we, we do a lot of work in introducing plants. Um, this is a list of the plants that we've introduced. It doesn't include uh, all the plants that we help popularize to, to the public, but we have introduced an awful lot. The two new ones coming out this year that um, we're introducing with uh, a former director of the J.C. Ralston Arboretum who still does plant breeding with us, two red buds, our native red bud, we have Golden Falls and Flamethrower. Mm, yeah, no, this, is, this is a real uh, breakthrough in plants. So those will start being available this spring in small numbers, but next fall uh, in much greater numbers. <laughs> so we're a university garden, um, and while that may sound like we're, support, we're, we're funded by the university, the truth is that my salary and our housekeepers and our electricity and water is funded by the, the university. Everything else, um, all our other uh, dozen plus staff, interns, uh, everything we do is, is self-funded. Um, so we do work a lot with students. Um, they are they are great. Uh, you know, I always hear about people talking about, you know, kids these days, you know, always on Facebook. They're not on Facebook. They're, they're not even on Snapchat anymore, we were talking about. They're on some, some app you haven't heard of, probably. Um, and they are always on their phones, but they're usually, you know, Googling a way to do something a whole lot more efficiently and better than the way that I've told them to do. Um, they really are amazing. I, I have two college-age students, so I will not vouch for all college-age students, because mine are pretty iffy. Um, <laughs> But the horticulture students that we get through our internship program and the other students that we have interning with volunteers and education are phenomenal. Uh, they really, the horticulture industry is in good hands. We need more students in horticulture, but the ones we have are really just outstanding, outstanding students. Um, we are a living laboratory. We, uh, we have classes out here, not just for horticulture, but ag engineering, ag education, forestry, chemistry, uh, unfortunately entomology and plant pathology, uh, did a lot of work out here, um, plant biology. Uh, do you know at NC State there's no botany department? No, there's, there's plant biology. You know why there's plant biology not botany? Any guesses? Google. Nobody Googles botany. No rising senior wants to be a botanist. They all want to be a, you know, a marine biologist or a vet. And so they Google biology and they get tricked into seeing plant biology exist here at uh, NC State. It's a brave new world. Um, what some our dean has said that, that this is this statistic, uh, over the next 25 years, 84% of ag jobs are going to be in the plant sciences, but 80% of students who are coming to NC State in the, um, in the College of Ag and Life Sciences are applying for the animal sciences. So we desperately need people in plant sciences. Uh, if you graduate with, with a plant science degree, you can get a job. People think there aren't jobs out there. They are, there are more jobs than there are people to fill them. It, it really is um, a, a great field to be in. And we emphasize that to people. I know when I went into horticulture, my parents first said, what's that? <laughs> and then said, are you going to be able to get a job and finally settle on, well, at least he'll be able to grow his own food if he can't get a job. <laughs> but, but they didn't realize is there's a ton of jobs out there in, in the plant sciences. Um, but we can't wait until students get to, to college to, to get them in horticulture, so we're doing a lot of work starting young. We have children's programs, elementary school. We start preschool with, you know, uh, you know, a little, you know, uh, garden uh, story time, but then we do summer camps. We just uh, listed our summer camps uh, this week. In the first two hours, we sold out of one of our camps. I didn't look, I, I didn't look yesterday. Last time I looked, we were already sold out of two of our camps. We opened, sold out of two of them. We're, we open up our camps first just to members, and we usually sell out about 75% of the spaces uh, while it's a member's only registration before we open up to, to general registration. Um, and they're fantastic. The kids out here are great, but we need to keep them engaged. Uh, elementary school kids are, are pretty easy. They're, they're excited about everything. Everything's new to them. So we have a middle school program, real STEAM-based science program. You know, here you can see they're making smoothies uh, on, on the bike behind there. There's a, a hydroponic system they built. Um, you know, we're, we're getting them ready for the new agriculture industry, I guess, and, and the, the uh, uh, recreational uh, 
new cannabis field with hydroponics made. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. We're teaching how to grow vegetables in hydroponics. <laughs> um, but, but they're great, and those, those kids are scary. They are so scary smart. Um, they ask questions that, you know, I'm, I, I try and avoid them because they ask me questions that I can't answer. I've only been doing this for close to 30 years, and I can't, I can't. Them. And then we work with the department of the horticultural science department on a hort science summer institute where we bring rising uh, uh, sophomores and juniors from across the state and across the country now into uh, uh, NC State. They stay for a week, live in a dorm. They go to nurseries. They go to, to farms, uh, you know, where they're doing growing. Um, vegetables and fruits. They go to high-tech labs in the research triangle. We show them all about what uh, horticulture is, you know, writ large. And uh, and one of the success stories, there's a, a young man right here who came in and he had lived a very sheltered life in a small town. He was homeschooled. He was planning to go to a small um, uh, college right near home. And he came in for this and it opened his eyes. He was the outstanding senior in horticulture. He went and did a semester abroad in Australia. This was a guy who was going to go to, go to college about 25 miles from his house and have a very small life. This summer we were growing out uh, impatience that he had been working on breeding. You know, so we, had, we, we grew him out to help him with evaluations on that. Um, fantastic. He's, done, he's worked with us uh, here. He's, he's, he's really a, a great kid and his world has gotten so much bigger and the horticulture industry has, gotten, has gained somebody that's really going to do neat things. So. I love these those success stories like that. Um, we do a lot for adults, of course, as well, like this. Uh, we do tours. Just got back a couple weeks ago from a tour to New Zealand uh, to see gardens and, and natural areas around New Zealand. Um, in two weeks, we're going to have our, our annual winter symposium. We've got three great speakers from there. One of them is an NC State uh, grad, North Carolina native. Uh, but this is a, a really fantastic program. Uh, Chris, who you probably communicated with while you were um, registering for this class, Chris Glenn, our education coordinator, has uh, offered the member rate for anybody who signs up for this today. If you sign up for it today, you get the member rate. Um, and there's some other things. Eco-friendly garden uh, coach with, with one of our speakers the day before. So that's Friday, the uh, February 15th, and then the Symposium the 16th, um, but yeah, you can get you can get a uh, member rate today. You can do that over with um, the the apparel. Do a lot of other things. We do other types of events like a gala in the garden. We do moonlight in the garden uh, for a lot of people out here this fall for that. Loads of fun. Do lots of plant sales. There are plants for sale outside here. We do a spring plant sale and uh, birdhouse competition and garden festival with education and. Uh, lots of other vendors. That'll be uh, uh, the first uh, weekend in April. It's open to everybody the first Saturday in April. Friday afternoon before that is members only access to the plant sale. So um, it's, it's a really good opportunity. And we don't just sell plants. You know, you see we do this free program. Well, we don't do just that for free. We have a giveaway where we, we give away uh, about um, somewhere around three and four thousand plants every year. Um, it's a lot of fun. Go to YouTube. You can you can see a, a whole video of it. It's it's the most fun fifteen minutes in horticulture. And it is it's the first Saturday in October, and it's for members only. So if you're a member, you come, you get um, to go away with a lot of plants. So what is the the Ralston Arboretum? We're we're uh, one of the the premier uh, national resources for plants and plant information. Uh, we're a gateway to NC State and horticulture. And really, other than athletics, we're the most public face of the university. This is where most more people interact with NC State University than anything besides, besides athletics. Um, we find, test, and promote some superior plants. And most importantly, we do what we're doing today. We try and connect people with plants both on a large level and on an individual level. That's really what, we're, what it's all about. So, you know, we are self-supported. Like I said, it's hard for us to do free programs like this, uh, you know, without um, some help. And one of our big supporters is uh, Leaf and Limb uh, the Tree Experts. Uh, they, are, they are phenomenal. They do uh, a lot of work for us out here. Um, they've taken down some big holly hedges, taken down some great trees. 
but they don't just uh, you know put their labor where their mouth is. They also put their money where their mouth is. Uh, uh, they are really invested in people uh, gardening right, caring for trees especially, but for the entire landscape. Um, they're really I'm really impressed with how they work. They bring staff out and do trainings on you know how to prune boxwoods, how to prune crepe myrtles. Really focus deeply on, on these things and make sure they have have the most talented crew. And they have sponsored this, and that's why we can put this on for free. And I'm told that if you sign up for their mailing list, uh, you get a free shirt. We're you know we're selling shirts. They get, they'll give you a free shirt. Um, it's cold outside. You need both. You get a shirt, t-shirt from them, and a sweatshirt from us. But it's it's great uh, the work that they do. I can't recommend them highly enough. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mention all three of our speakers now, and then we're gonna jump into it. Uh, We've got Bill Fontenot, who's going to start with kind of the most important thing in terms of gardening, and that's soils. And uh, what, what Dr. Fontenot has, has forgotten about soils um, you know, is more than what I've learned. Um, he's advisor for the National Mulch and Soil Council, uh, really is an expert in the field, and, and really understands what gardeners need to know about soil. So um, we're going to have him on. And then uh, Dr. Barb Fair, uh, who works with the, the Urban Forest Ca uh, Council. We've got some, some uh, uh, booklets from the Urban Forest Council that, that uh, Dr. Fair uh, wrote that are free to take. They're over here at our stand. We'll pass some around as well. Um, but she's an extension specialist, works with nurseries, works with municipalities, works with landscapers, so that we don't have what we see so often, which is plants going into the landscape and then just dying because they're, they're installed wrong, um, that sort of thing. They're grown wrong, so, so really has helped move the state forward there. And then uh, Dr. Ted Bilderback, uh, who is um, worked with Nursery Extension, helping uh, folks grow plants better, uh, working with soils, with fertilizers, with water regimes, pruning, all the practices around uh, nursery crops to grow better. Um, better plants, um, and you know what I think even more importantly, he was director of the J.C. Ralston Arboretum for for many years before I was, and really moved the arboretum forward. So I'm going to stop right there. Um, there's lots to talk about with the arboretum. Uh, I, you know, I could go on for a couple of hours. I won't. I want to get going uh, as quickly as possible with the real meat of this, but I hope you will um, connect with us. Uh, I hope you'll, you'll come out to the Arboretum and visit. We're free. We're open. We've got lots of programming. There is a sign-up for what we call cuttings, which, is, which will give you notices of all the programs that we have, like this and, and the children's programs and adult programs. And um, really hope you'll, you'll consider that.